Ballyclare District Historical Memorial Association. The foundation of the Irish Free State with 40,000 Protestants murdered or exiled between 1920 and 1923. Sinn Féin IRA with her insatiable appetite in calling for inquiries into the past are surprisingly quiet when it comes to this subject. They speak of an Ireland for all, but our history tells a very different story. The political parties in the Republic of Ireland also remain silent on the shameful and murderous past that makes up the very foundation of their state. In the Southern Ireland census of 1911, it showed Irish Protestants made for 10% of the population. By 2011, the population of Protestants had dropped to only 3.5%. Author of Buried Lives, Robin Burry, found in his research that between 1920 and 1923 there was a mass exodus of some 40,000 native Irish Protestants due to sectarian intimidation and murders, a period which he calls involuntary emigration. The most dramatic discovery he has made was the murder of up to 200 Protestants at the hands of the anti-treaty IRA at a time when the RIC had been disbanded and British army units had been withdrawn. In June 1922, the Southern Irish Loyalist Relief Association stated it had assisted 3,000 RIC men who had fled from Ireland in fear of their lives. The only police at this time was the IRP, the Irish Republican Police, made up of members of the IRA. The emigration of Southern Irish Protestants because of the sectarian wrath of the IRA and also the need to mere decree played a huge role in the decline of the Protestant population during the 20th century. By the 1960s, around 16% of Protestants were married to Catholics and the decree meant that for a Protestant to marry a Catholic, they first had to sign a written guarantee that any children they bore would have to be baptised Catholic, educated in Catholic schools, raised in the Catholic faith with no exceptions or interference from the non-Catholic parent. After the Anglo-Irish Treaty was signed in January 1922, Protestants feared how their lives would be after the Free State was established. They had good reason to worry. Between the 26th and the 28th of April, during a period of truce, one of the most vicious cull of Protestants was carried out, with 13 innocent Protestants dying violently in Bandon Valley alone. Had the IRA been more efficient in their intent, they could have murdered up to 30 unarmed innocent Protestants. The owner of Ballygroman House, Thomas Hornibrook, was a 78-year-old widower. He and his family had suffered much intimidation at the hands of the IRA for months. The intimidation was so bad that a local IRA commander, Michael O'Regan, gave the family a gun to discourage those intent on theft. On the early hours of the 26th of April, a gang of IRA men from the Bandon turned up to Mr Hornibrook's door and when the family refused to open the door, the leader, Michael O'Neill, entered via window and was subsequently shot by Captain Herbert Woods, a relative who had been staying with the family because of all the intimidation they were suffering. Later that morning, the IRA returned and demanded that all the men of the house come out promising they wouldn't be harmed. Thomas Hornibrook, his son Samuel and Herbert Woods were then kidnapped and murdered. It was said that Herbert was beaten and then dragged by a car until he was dead. The house was burned out and the land seized by the anti-treaty IRA. The murderous cull didn't stop there and over the next 72 hours more innocent Protestants were murdered, beaten and burned from their homes. In Dunman Way that night, Francis Fitzmaurice, a 70-year-old solicitor, David Gray, a 37-year-old chemist, and James Buttimer, an 81-year-old retired draper, all shot dead by the IRA just because they were Protestant. 
the next night in Ballinin, Enniskin. Robert Howe, a 60-year-old farmer. John Chinnery, a 32-year-old farmer. Alexander McKinley, aged only 17. John Buttimer, a 59-year-old farmer, and his farm help, James Greenfield, aged 45, all shot dead just because they were Protestant. In Clonakilty, young Robert Nagel, aged only 16, was a post office assistant. And in Killowen, John Bradfield, a 69-year-old farmer, both shot dead. Over 20 other innocent Protestants survived or escaped further attacks in West Cork alone. In the aftermath of the Dunmanway Bandon Valley shootings, over 100 to 200 Protestants fled Cork alone, with more fleeing other parts of the Free State for fear of more attacks. In West Cork, the anti-treaty IRA had taken control of more Loyalist-owned farms and land transfers than anywhere else. The Free State Government done very little to control the Cork IRA and the British Government would no longer intervene. Those that conducted the killings called the process polite ethnic cleansing and they were never brought to justice. Irish-born Protestants were evicted from their homes. Almost all of the Protestant-owned businesses were attacked or boycotted. Walter Kelly, a farmer from near Glasson in County Westmeath, was warned that the IRA would be taking possession of his land. Mr Kelly managed to find a buyer, but on hearing this, 100 IRA volunteers turned up to his home and burned it to the ground. Small farmers couldn't get anyone to work for them. They had their machinery stolen or vandalised and their land spiked. 200 big houses, some of which had been in Protestant families for over 400 years, were burned to the ground. In Tipperary alone, some 20 homes belonging to Anglo-Irish families were burnt out. Many churches too were ransacked and burned to the ground. It is heartbreaking to see some of the old Protestant churches and grand homes from this time in ruins, lying empty and in a state of disrepair. But they stand there as a reminder to us all of the suffering caused by the ethnic cleansing campaign carried out by the IRA against the Irish Protestant minority during very troubled times. The Protestant people suffered greatly at the hands of the Roman Catholic Church and the IRA. There have been many atrocities carried out against them during times of peace that very few talk about. It is most definitely a period in our history where the slaughter of Irish Protestants has been given very little acknowledgement. If you're enjoying our channel, please let us know by clicking on the like, share and subscribe icons below and thank you for your continued support.